we're facing a growing population, an expanding population. We're seeing cities expand in, into farm areas. People need to know that we're farmers, we're stewards of the land. We are here to make our property better, our land better. I, I think one of the big drivers is sustainability, and everybody's got their own definition of what that is. But to a farmer back on the farm, that means utilizing the natural resources that you have to the best of your ability so that you can be profitable, so that you can be in business the next year. Our resource is the land. That's, that's what we start with. That's what we raise our crops on. We have to maintain that and, and improve it. Water is something that all of us use. You know. Um, friends, neighbors, farmers. That creates a demand uh, for more concentration of conserving the use of water. Population is growing more and more every day. We're going to have more mouths to feed, and we have to look at how we use our water and make sure we are using it in the, the best and most appropriate ways. You know, when we take care of those, you know, it's taking care of my family, it's taking care of my neighbors and, and everybody in the town I grew up in. Water usage by everyone involved in agriculture as well as in this country is very important to all of us. NCGA has been involved in water quality for many years. It's been one of the driving issues for the uh, production and stewardship action team. We have a specific action team that gets together to work on water quantity and quality issues and we bring producers from across the United States together to not only talk about the things that they do on their own farms, but to look at things under a big picture to see what the challenges and opportunities are across the United States when we deal with the issues. Well, NCJ is, is grower-led, uh, and we rely on our, our growers and our members for a lot of information. Our production stewardship action team has, has spent many years working on the issue of water quality, and with that, they've, they've done many research studies and, and put out a lot of good information to our members to use. They can band together and they look at all aspects of you know different watersheds in different areas of the country. They can really bring that to a central collection point. NCGA kind of works as a catalyst to put all the information together. I can pick out those pieces that I think may work back in my operation and bring them back to my community and put them to use. Whenever a farmer like me in Maryland needs some help with some water quality issues or some uh, and some advice and how to attack the regulations, NCGA has always been there. We're all kind of a big family that works together on this and are looking for the same thing, the, the better way to do things. Water is a finite resource that we have to take care of and we have to make the best use of. And water quality is a, a major factor in our operation. Everybody is very concerned about the importance of water. Water is one of our biggest um, issues that we will be dealing with over the years and we are very conscientious and we want to make sure that it stays clean because it affects us too. And it's just, it's the right way to do things. Most all farmers who are in business now have learned what they need to do so that we can continue to keep strong water quality. Water management in my area consists of managing your soil conditions and that's why a lot of it is moved to the no-till. In my area, it's no-till farming. Uh, we're planting cover crops on almost every acre that we can. Less tillage is better. That's a big deal in our area because we have a lot of sloping ground, we have a lot of high quality ground, but we don't want it washed away. Most farmers in my area are using conservation practices now. They've gone to the, to the grass waterways, to buffer strips, uh, reduced tillage. We're putting our fertilizers in the ground a lot of what we can do with our irrigation sprinklers, we don't have to put it all down at once. We can nurse on just a little bit at a time and make it just the exact amount. We have filter strips around some ponds and streams. We've built shelter belts. We now use uh, strategically placed precision agriculture, so the seed is placed in, in the correct place. We conserve by using less fuel to get it done. We're putting in buffer strips. We're making sure that we have a buffer area around a stream. Uh, and if it looks like there's gonna be some erosion, we'll leave that area out and let it mature, let residue build up so we don't have any erosion. We have waterways in places that so the water can soak in instead of running off quickly. We, we think of water management a lot, especially this time of year because it's getting very dry and it has been, 
But if you manage that soil moisture, you are managing your water the same as, as a person that irrigates. We are using best management practices wherever we can. Scouting more, only using pesticides when they are needed. We're actually using much less active ingredients with herbicides than we did 15 years ago. I think, again, the, the more efficient use of our inputs, especially our pesticides, our fertilizer, leaves less left over that the crop is not using. We're much more efficient on all these things than we were just a few years ago. In actuality, they're reducing the amount of water, total water that they have to have because they're doing it more efficiently. All those things are put into practice. and, and as we move forward, you know, I, I foresee uh, more best management practices and fertilizers being implemented uh, amongst neighbors because it's, it's both an environmental and economic decision uh, that, you know, that helps the environment and it helps our bottom line. I think that we can all work together to reduce the amount of runoff, any kind of problems that we have in water quality and clean the water up when we're working together. Many years ago, everybody had some kind of connection to the farm, but these days, less than one to two percent of our population actually has a connection to agriculture and the farm. And we have to get the message out to them. We have to invite them. We have to encourage them to visit with us and see what we do. Today, we're not the majority, we're the minority. And it's really important that we know what the, what the people that aren't involved in agriculture think. We as agricultural producers have to be a part of our community. We've got that story to tell and that, to me that's why we need to be involved in community things. The only education that most of our communities get is when they get to visit with us and we tell our story. And uh, I think if, if people understand that we love our land and we live on our land and we drink our own water, that they can feel relaxed that we're doing everything that we can to make sure that it's better than the day that we caught it. And as farmers, we're very visible as the community drives by and sees us in the field, as they see our trucks going up and down the road carrying grain. It's important that they understand that what we do is very vital to our community. I think NCGA provides great tools and programs for us to be able to tell our story and be able to tell it in a way that we can relate to the other 99% of the population. One thing we've learned in NCGA is to be leaders. And to be a leader, you have to show the a correct way to accomplish what you need to. And that is what our NCGA members have really done. They have become leaders in the community because it's all about us living together and working together in a clean environment with a sustainable food supply. The, f the farmers themselves don't spread that message. It's going to get told for us. A lot of the problems today are are just misconceptions. People don't know what we do. When they come and actually see what we do, the effort we put into taking care of the environment, the production practices we use, they say, oh. NCGA's efforts uh, in the media and the social media and everywhere else across the country in the past two years has helped that tremendously. And that story uh, won't go away. We need to, to work on it more yet. And NCGA has the ability to put all of these together and send them out at a national level. NCGA has helped me become a better producer by uh, pooling together all the, the information and the best management practices from different areas of the country. NCGA provides a great venue in many ways for producers to continue to learn. Sharing of information is a tremendous help to the producers and to the affiliated states and their organizations. We have a lot of members, a lot of checkoff contributors that, that depend on the work we do to get information out. For me, NCGA has always been there with the technical advice, uh, communicating with other farmers from around the country with the same issues that we have in the state that I live in. We're different states all coming together with different uh, ways that we farm. And so it's farmers learning from other farmers how to do things appropriately. You're engaged with people from all over the country that does the same thing that you do. And you can't help but learn a lot that you don't know. It helps me improve my operation by learning from others what they're doing and getting out of my own neighborhood, my own backyard. And there's always something new. You gotta keep your mind open 
and can keep communicating. And NCGA is, I think, one of the things that helps all of us coordinate our thinking and learn off of each other. When my great-grandparents came to the area that I farm in in the mid-1800s, they stopped there because that's where there was water supply. Our resources are a limited resource. Our water is limited. I would like to keep the water on our farm as clean and pure and plentiful as it ever, as it ever has been. The environment allows me to produce my crop. Without my land, without my water resources and all, I can't produce a crop. I look at the uh, land and the environment as one of the most important things that I have to take care of. In order for the generate our generations of our family to continue being producers, we have to be great stewards of this resource. We have to do the very best we can. Many of our homes out in the country still rely on, on well water, and that water needs to be clean and safe and, and abundant. And as long as we're doing the right practices on our farms and not contaminating that water, we're improving things for everybody. We have a, a very big spring. It's just beautiful blue water. It's, it's really important that if, if we don't take care of that, kids and grandkids and the future generations won't be able to go to that spot or any spot like it. Preserving water resources on our farm, like many farms across the United States, is very important to us. And we saw how we could produce a crop with very little rain because of the agronomic practices that we've started to use on the farm. It's actually made me a better farmer. I have uh, learned how to farm in such a way where I conserve water resources, where I conserve seed, I don't use as much fertilizer, I may use less chemicals and pesticides. We're able to produce a crop that was more bountiful than we previously would have been able to 20 years ago. So we're always looking, we're always learning, we're always searching out new resources to improve our operation because it's critical that we do and we try to pass on the things that we learn to the next generations. If I don't protect that and uh, maintain adequate supply, then my kids might not be able to move back to this area and, and someday carry on our farming tradition that we have in our family. I have land that I've farmed since I started farming 25 years ago. And I know that land is better land today than when I started farming it. As we have moved into a new era, we are saving our resources. There's a multitude of things we do to not put anything out there that's not actually needed to produce the crop. And hopefully other producers can use those ideas and improve their own. My success depends on what I can learn, and I learn a lot from my fellow farmers from different states. And it's really important that we have all these ideas from publications, from uh, newsletters, from NCGA's uh, efforts to, to make sure farmers know those things. Another thing we do at NCGA is our corn yield contest. All these people that are in the contest are basically on the leading edge of really trying hard to produce a lot of yield. What did it take to do that? How efficient is your fertilizer? I think it's a good measuring base to start from. Most of the time it's just a small tweak. It's not a big tweak that, that, that they do uh, which can increase their yields. And I'm su totally surprised at some of the yields that we're seeing through the contest. They take it very seriously, they have a lot of fun, they compete with their neighbors, and again, it's contributing to a database that really, I think, starts to give a little focus to who's out there doing what and how they're doing it. I think the success of a, of a farmer these days is to be able to produce more with less. All these things accomplish uh, positive water quality issues for us. The NCGA is an important part of the process of disseminating information to our grower members. We hold the uh, Commodity Classic every year in which we have a large trade show and learning sessions where we bring in the foremost experts in different fields to bring forth new uh, practices, to encourage them to look and adopt different uh, types of uh, practices to improve their operation, both to be more environmentally friendly and to be more profitable. There's many steps that we can take to, to minimize the effect that we have on the environment while maximizing yields. And that's the very basis for the best management practices that our land grants have developed and NCGAs uh, centralized together and, and really worked hard at spreading the message on out to growers. It's really a win-win for farmers. We can become more efficient and we can have less environmental impact while maximizing our productivity. 
we're looking at where we have succeeded, where the benefits have been in the past, and taking that and expanding into the future. And with those tools that we get, if we use them to, to benefit not only me, but our, our fellow farmers across the country, then, then we're doing our job uh, as far as improving our water quality, soil health, and just the general environment as a whole. And that's where progress has come from. It's been small steps at a time. NCGA has a bunch of dedicated farmers that want to do the positive things to make us uh, capable of having everybody have the cleanest, most reliable food supply in the world. We're all in this together. All 38,648 members.